Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course and today's lesson is on classifying living things. Our objectives for this lesson will be, number one, how do scientists classify living organisms? And why is it important to have a system for organizing living things? And number three, what are the five kingdoms and how are they different from each other? Let's first talk about what taxonomy is. Taxonomy is the science of classifying living things. Based on uh, similarities, uh, the taxonomy is based on similarities between organisms. That means their similarities could be based upon their traits or how they look physically, or their physical appearance. It could also be based on things like their, their history or evolutionary history, meaning where made that, where did that organism come from? Uh, did those organisms, do they have a common ancestor? Um, it could be based upon their lifestyle, uh, what uh, foods they eat, the location of where they primarily live. So taxonomy takes into account several different factors when we are classifying organisms. So the scientist that actually studies taxonomy and uh, has to classify organisms is called a taxonomist. So the job of a taxonomist is to discover, describe, and categorize all living organisms. Uh, there was a scientist named Carolus Linnaeus, and he was a Swedish botanist, and he was the first scientist to come up with a very uh, organized system of classifying and naming organisms. So there are certain rules, again, about how to put classes, how to classify or, uh, organisms, and the rules of taxonomy include, um, of course, all known organisms are classified and named by a set of rules, and Finding differences can be tricky. So again, they can be classified by physical traits, sources of nutrition, locomotion or how they move. Um, they can also be classified by cellular organization, meaning all living things are made of cells. And so if that organism is single cell, meaning it's only made of one cell, or that organism is multicellular, and that just means that organism is made of many cells. That's another way to classify organisms. Also, are these organisms macroscopic or microscopic? Macroscopic meaning you can see them with the naked eye. You do not need an instrument or a tool to see them. However, microscopic organisms, you'll need something like a microscope or some type of tool to help you uh, see that organism. So scientists or taxonomists have used different systems and groups in order to classify organisms. And the two main uh, ways that scientists group organisms will be through kingdoms and domains. Now, Scientists can use either the kingdom system or the domain system, or they can uh, use both in order to describe uh, what an organism would be or where they would fit into uh, the whole life, uh, all of the organisms put together. So we have six kingdoms. We have what we call the eubacteria kingdom. We have the kingdom archibacteria. We have the kingdom protista. We have the kingdom fungi, we have the kingdom plantae, and we have the kingdom, kingdom animalia. And we'll discuss each of these kingdoms individually. We also have what we call domains, and they're the larger group. They're actually uh, larger than the kingdoms um, because there's only three of them and all living organisms have to fit under these three. So we have the domain eubacteria, we have the domain archaea, and we have the domain eukarya. Now, the eukarya domain includes the following four kingdoms, the protista kingdom, the fungi kingdom, the plantae kingdom, and the animalia kingdom. Um, if you are to look at this diagram, you'll see that there's the three domain system here with the bacteria or eubacteria domain, archae domain, and the eukarya domain. However, the six kingdom system includes the bacteria, archaea, 
or archaebacteria, protist, plantae, fungi, and animalia all can fall under the eukarya domain. 